Hello everyone, my name is Joni. I'm a second year physician associate student training in London and welcome to Love Qualified. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about personal statements. Again, I just wanted to start this video by saying thank you so much to everyone who voted on the poll. I think there's about 41 of you who voted. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all your encouragement. I know that I say this all the time, but I just want to let you guys know that I am grateful for everything that you guys are doing to support me and this channel. And so God bless you for that. Today, I'm going to be talking about personal statements. First of all, I'm going to give you guys some tips for writing your personal statement for PA school. And then then I'm finally going to read my personal statement. There are three things that you need to consider before you even start putting pen to paper or before you even start putting your fingers on your keyboard to start writing. The very first thing is what is a PA? Do you understand what a PA is? Do you understand what the PA role entails? Do you know what a physician associate is? If not, then you better do some research on the role, what PAs do, their limited and all of that kind of stuff. The second thing is why do you want to become a PA? Now people want to become PAs for different reasons, various reasons. You need to understand why you want to become a PA because that's important in the way you're going to write about the role and subsequently in the interviews as well when they ask you that question you know, potentially in the interview, why you want to become a PA, you need to have solid reason. The very last thing that you need to um, figure out is what experiences or attributes do you have that will help you become a PA or survive PA school? So those are the three things I want you to consider first. If you don't have answers to these questions, pause this video and think about those three things and then come back and watch the rest of it. Just a disclaimer, I am not telling you how to write your personal statement. I am sharing tips from my experience. So these tips might not work for you, but um, you can try it. If it works for you, praise the Lord. If it doesn't work for you, that's absolutely fine. But I'm hoping that some of these tips, if not all, will work for you. The very first thing, the very first tip is um, to look at the personal statement requirements for each university. Now, unlike medicine, where you apply with just one personal statement to all the different unis that you're applying to with um, a PA school is slightly different because some universities might ask you for might ask you different questions that they want you to include in your personal statement um, some unis might ask you one question some uni, unis might ask you two questions and some unis might give you a word limit that you have to meet um, so it's important that you make sure you answer the questions they're asking you for this reason because you don't really have a limit as to how many PA schools you can apply to this means that you can potentially apply to loads but then you need to remember that if you're applying to loads you, know, you might have to write loads of different personal statements so that's something that you need to consider um, but you just have to make sure that you are actually answering the question that the university is asking you if you don't answer the question that's not gonna work in your favor when the admissions team is reading over your work. Now, the second tip is to make sure that you come up with a plan or a structure for your personal statement. So I'm a planner, like I really cannot start writing something, any piece of work without planning first, even if it's just writing headings and then putting bullet points under those headings and then fleshing it out later. That's how I work, that's how it works for me. It might not work for you, so if that's not you, that's totally fine, but I find that that works for me to know exactly how I'm going to structure my piece of writing. The reason why I say that it's good to make a plan is to make sure that your personal statement doesn't read in a way that you it sounds like you're just jumping all over the place I feel like if you make a plan you're more likely to present the information in a more cohesive manner after making a plan and after you've come up with all the different things I mentioned at the beginning so why you want to become a PA what PAs are and your work experience after you've made the notes down write down all these notes somewhere now after you've made a plan and made a structure come back and make bullet points under your 
you know your document and then flesh it out later because you have all the necessary things that you need to be able to write this personal statement so you need to come back and flesh it out um so things like what are the things that you learned from your work experience how did your experience kind of shape you and um, most importantly link it back to the pa role and how that is important for you and this career path that you are um, pursuing that your first draft is going to be rubbish like the first draft for anything is always rubbish don't fret don't despair keep writing write it for a couple of uh, write it and then maybe put it away for a while and then come back and look at it I mean, again it just depends on how you work but from my experience once you write it out you leave it for a couple of days come back and then read it again with fresh eyes and then you can start seeing some things that you didn't see before and you're like hmm i can't believe i wrote that <laughs> your first draft was always going to be rubbish but it will get better the only way is up from there okay the first draft is the worst it's ever going to be as you revise it and edit it is going to get better one of the things that you can do to make it better is to give someone else to read Sometimes we can be a bit shy, we don't want to give other people to read our work and we can be a bit protective of the work that we do and stuff but it's important that you give someone to read it over. Now if you have someone who is a PA student, who has who is a PA or your um, supervisor, your academic advisor, your personal tutor, uni or someone who has either done this before or who has a some kind of background in academic writing who can help you and give you feedback, please definitely give them to read it over for you and so that they can give you feedback on how you can make it better. I think this is a very important step. Please do not miss this step because we are blinded to certain things because it's our own work. When other people read it, they'll be able to point out things that you weren't able to see. Make sure not to give too many people though because then when you get too many conflicting opinions it can confuse you and it can become really difficult so give a number of people people that you trust and hopefully they will help you make it better in my case um, I gave one of my friends who was in her second year at the time to read over my work and she read over it and then she gave me some feedback and her feedback was absolutely amazing so um, yeah I, th I think I gave my personal tutor as well to read my personal statement yeah and she helps me with some feedback so after you finish you think you're done go back and make sure that you have answered the questions because you might have missed something you know along the way in terms of you editing and stuff you might have missed something something important so go back and double check now that I've given you all the tips uh, without further ado I'm going to go and read my personal statement so at st. George's at the moment um, it might change in future but at the moment you are asked to answer two questions so each question you have a 500 word limit that you have to write so I'm going to read both essays for you now before I go into read this I just want to say that my personal statement is not perfect I mean it was good enough to get me into PA school so I hope that by me reading this to you you would be able to have an idea of what a you know what PA school personal statement is but don't take it as the you know absolute standard or whatever it's just to help you guys give you guys an idea of how to structure it um, but it's not perfect so you might find mistakes or you might find things that don't appeal to you it's just the way I wrote mine so yeah first question describe how you think the role of a physician associate fits into the UK healthcare system <clears throat> and I read Patient-centred care is the main focus of the services provided by the UK's national health care system. Recent developments have shown that the system seems to be overstretched and this has increased the pressure and workload on doctors as well as other healthcare professionals. In addition to this, the fact that doctors tend to rotate within specialties every four to six months makes it difficult to provide stability and continuity of care. One strategy implemented to help resolve these problems was introducing the physician associate profession. Physician associates are not doctors, but they are medical professionals who have undergone a very similar training to doctors. They are generalists who work under the supervision of doctors and their role is not aimed to replace skills, but to add to the skill set. The PA role is dynamic and it provides PAs with competencies that allow them to work in any field in medicine. Their role covers a wide range of duties, including taking medical histories, carrying out examinations, making diagnoses, implementing management plans and undertaking appropriate procedures. 
Their skills can be utilized on the ward, clinics, and even in the theater where they can assist consultants and registrars. PAs work together with members of the multidisciplinary team and they become familiar with how the system works. For this reason, PAs can eventually get involved in education where they teach and train upcoming PAs as well as junior doctors. In general practice, PAs can get involved in seeing patients in clinics. This will reduce the strain on general practitioners, open up more appointment slots and eventually lead to an increase in patient satisfaction. Holistic care is important in hospitals and GPs. Therefore, PAs are involved in following a patient's journey throughout their stay in hospital. The PA role therefore provides continuity and consistency within the healthcare system. Furthermore, the training of PAs preferably recruits new graduates rather than the current healthcare professionals, so the introduction of this role does not reduce the number in the already existing workforce. The PA role promises to be very important for providing stability to the medical workforce and supporting patient-centered care. Okay, that's my first personal statement, uh, or my first essay. The second one, the question was, discuss your motivation to become a physician associate, highlighting details of the experience, qualifications, and personal qualities you will bring to the course. Okay, so this is my second um, statement. And here it goes. <laughs> Studying the biomedical science course here at St. George's University and being part of the integrated learning with medical students has given me an opportunity to learn about important physiological processes as well as the mechanisms and treatment of diseases. The course has also given me fundamental knowledge in research, which is an important foundation in medicine. However, my interest in the sciences, caring nature and enthusiastic mind are responsible for my drive to explore a career that looks at the clinical aspects. The physician associate course will give me an opportunity to interact with patients and provide hands-on care which will enable me to make an impact in the lives of others. During my work experience at St. George's Hospital, I shadowed doctors on the neonatal intensive care unit. On one occasion, a baby with strider needed an x-ray for further investigations. However, conflict arose as the baby's health was in poor condition and therefore the team had to de decide whether he was well enough to go for the scan. This highlighted to me the importance of effective decision making, especially when under pressure. I also watched a live vaginal birth where labor was induced. The presence of meconium in the amniotic fluid raised suspicions of fetal distress. After the obstetricians delivered the baby, he was rushed to the high dependency unit and closely monitored by neonatologists. This demonstrated the importance of teamwork in medicine, as even specialized medical professionals are always working together in order to provide the best quality of patient care. For the past three years, I have been working as a healthcare assistant, and this has enabled me to gain hands-on experience in caring for patients. I have also learned some basic clinical skills, such as checking blood pressure and blood sugar levels. Learning about the different roles of, of healthcare professionals within the NHS has helped me understand the importance of the multidisciplinary team in patient care. Looking after patients with dementia has improved my problem solving abilities as I often have to think outside the box when dealing with difficult situations. I have also gained effective communication skills through interacting with patients, relatives and staff. My confidence in dealing with people and working in a clinical setting has improved through this experience. It has also helped me understand the importance of the holistic approach in medicine, which complements its clinical aspects. To further explore my interest in science, I successfully applied for a Society of Reproduction and Fertility summer studentship. For eight weeks, I carried out research on the cell biology of the pregnancy disorder preeclampsia. This highlighted to me how research lays a foundation for evidence-based medicine. In addition to this, I have developed my leadership skills while working as a student ambassador. This role requires me to run teaching sessions and take responsibility for the learning of pupils. I acknowledge the fact that physician associate studies can be a demanding degree and will require coping mechanisms. Being part of my university's gospel choir and charity dance shows helps relieve stress. These experiences have taught me the importance of commitment. I also teach myself to play the ukulele and the guitar, which has improved my ability to learn independently. 
I believe all these experiences, all these experiences have contributed to me holding the necessary attributes required to succeed in this career. I am a hardworking and conscientious individual who is willing to learn. I'm looking forward to this journey to become a successful physician associate who will help impact the lives of others in the future. Mic drop. <laughs> so that was my personal statement. It is not perfect, but I hope that that gives you some sort of idea on how to structure it and how to start working on your personal statement. If you have any more questions about anything that you've heard in this video, any of the tips or anything that you, you want to ask more about from my personal statement, please leave any comments down below. And if there are any other application videos that you'd like to see, please leave them down below as well. And I hope this video helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and God bless. Bye.